For the record, it is Thursday, September 13, 2018. It's 5.15 p.m. and time for the regular meeting of the Wenatchee City Council. Uh, we start our meetings with a pledge to our flag. So, Council Member Poyer, would you lead us? Yes, please stand and face the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, Thank you, Council Member Poyer. And uh, for the record this evening, we have uh, four council members present. Uh, and we have two on the phone, I believe. Council Member Huffaker, are you there? Present. Council Member Kulas, are you there? Present. Thank you. And Council Member Bailey is not here. So for the record, we have six this evening. Uh, first item on our agenda would be the consent items, which includes approval of this evening's agenda, vouchers and the minutes from the previous meeting, and a resolution that revises the regular meetings of the Wenatchee City Council for November and December. I would entertain a motion. Your Honor, I'll make a motion to approve agenda, vouchers and minutes from previous meetings and the resolution number 2018-32 revising the regular meeting schedule for november and december 2018. second motion by council member esparza second by council member markhart to adopt this evening's consent items including the agenda vouchers and minutes from the previous meetings and resolution 2018-32 discussion hearing none all those in favor say aye Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next item on our agenda this evening would be citizen comment. This would be a time of any member of the audience would like to address the city council on something that's not on this evening's agenda. We'd give you three minutes and ask that you give us your name and address for the record. Any takers this evening? I see Manuel sort of trying to get up. <laughs> Here he comes. We don't have uh, Anna. How are you, Manuel? Good, thank you. And I don't, I don't know if we have an interpreter today no, for you. Myra so. was sick today. So. Yeah, Myra's sick, and I'll do it. you want to do it? Okay. Thank you, Ruth. Mm, thank you, Ruth. Hi. Good afternoon. Um, I came to to see. Thank you for all the projects in the South Wenatchee. The people are really happy with the, in the corners, uh, really happy, especially for old men. And uh, a lot of people say, oh, really good, many The projects in the city works pretty good. good. And this is why to came. And, and still working for the event, uh, United Neighborhood Association, October 13, almost finished. To the, and I want to, uh, next meeting, I want to come to the invited uh, okay. office. So, um, and also the 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 police. Uh, well, mm -hmm. uh, estamos también muy contentos por los oficiales de policía que están uh, patrullando más seguido. We're also Se very happy uh, that the, the police department is more vigilant in that area, and the um, police officers have been patrolling the area a lot more. Okay. Oh, yes. Uh, especialmente los fines de semana y pues. Queremos darle las gracias también. Especially on weekends, and we just wanted to thank you. Great. So, y pues estamos contentos y queremos trabajar unidos, ¿verdad? Todo para un bien and común de nuestra comunidad. We're happy, and we want to continue to work with the city for the common good of our community. Good. Siguiente meeting, les traeré la invitación para nuestro evento. At the next meeting, I'll come in with an invitation for the event we're having. Okay. Um, al momento de le quiero entregar estas dos formas si hubiera alguien que quisiera hacer una donación puede deducir su de impuestos ¿eh? ¿Cómo? puedo quiero darles estas dos formas uh -huh. si alguien quiere hacer una donación para el evento es bien bien recibido and I bring some forms in case somebody wants to make a donation to our event okay yes. and I'll leave them here with you perfect pues muchas gracias Thanks, Thanks, Manuel. More, more to come, hopefully. Yes. More yes. projects. Nice. Mucho más para que sigue. 
Se va a venir. Yeah. Muchas your, gracias. Your, your English is getting very good, by the way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I want in the future more speaking, more better. Yeah. Yeah. Still learning. Yeah, it's getting Thank very you. good. Thanks, Manuel. All right, anybody else wish to address the city council on something that's not on this evening's agenda? Seeing no takers, we will move on to our presentations this evening, for which we have, I believe, three. And uh, we got a proclamation on Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. Who has that one? I do, Mayor. Councilmember Poyer, would you read that into the record? Yes, thank you. Whereas each year in the United States, more than 15,000 children from birth to 19 years old were diagnosed with cancer, equal to about 42 childhood cancer diagnoses each day. Whereas each year worldwide, there are more than 300,000 new childhood cancer diagnoses, equal to about every three minutes, a family will hear the words, your child has cancer. And whereas, although the five-year survival rate for childhood cancers are, has reached 80%, nearly 2,000 American children under the age of 19 still die each year from cancer, making it the leading killer of child and disease. And whereas those that do not survive will face at least one chronic health condition later in, on in life, not limited, but including heart, liver, lung damage, infertility, secondary cancers, and growth deficits. And whereas the causes of childhood cancer are largely unknown and more studies are needed to understand which treatments work best for children. And whereas cancer treatment for children often must differ from traditional adult treatments to take into account children's developmental needs and other factors, and whereas children, including Layla Brekstran, are among the hundreds of children being treated for cancer in Washington State, and whereas Washington is a caring state and community that supports children and families, now therefore I, Frank Jane Koontz, Mayor of the City of Wenatchee, do hereby proclaim September 2018 as Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, in witness whereof I have caused the seal of the City of Wenatchee to be affixed on this 13th day of September 2018, Frank J. Koontz, Mayor. Thank you, Mike and Linda. And we have Amy and Parker and Sarah and Anthony here, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this goes with it. Oh, I'm sorry, we got two of them. Yeah. Thank you. And me. Let me get my glasses off. Okay. How are you? I'm Frank. Parker. Parker, how are you? Hi. Amy. Amy, how are you? <laughs> Hi, I'm Frank. Hi, I'm Sarah. Hi. Sarah. Hi. How are you? Hi. What's your name? <laughs> I'm Anthony. Yeah. How are you doing, Anthony? I'm doing good. Good. <laughs> good. All right, so you, first of all, you got your pictures Precious. taken. Can we get our pictures taken? Do we have a camera? Come on. Oh, bless. Can you see it? Are we all in the same picture? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Can you hold that? Yeah. All right. Act like you like the mayor. Nobody else does. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you for being here. And uh, appreciate all you're going through. And, Let's get this disease knocked out, okay? Right. Sure thing. Well, wow. Childhood cancer awareness. Yeah. In the next one. She's adorable. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Hi, Anthony. Hi. You want to sit up here for a little bit? Yeah. Yay! Did you hear yourself right at home? Anthony, you can't hit this hard. This is 100 years old, but bang, this oh. nice and soft, okay? Yeah. On, on here, okay. ready? Look at that, huh? Yeah! <laughs> yeah! 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 Oh, come on, come on. I think he's your... Oh. I think he's going to be an actor someday, don't you think? Yeah! yeah. Bye! All right, thank you. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye. He's so cute. All right. All right, next proclamation is Young Professionals Week. Who's got that one? I have that one. Council Member Sparza. <laughs> Young Professionals Week, September 24th through the 29th, 2018. Whereas Young Professionals Week is dedicate, dedicated to celebrate, retain, and inspire young professionals in the city of Wenatchee. And whereas young professionals are recognized as an integral piece of the city of Wenatchee's current workforce, an economic, social, and cultural future. 
and whereas community leaders, businesses, organizations, and young professionals will forge connections to drive the community forward through unique opportunities and partnerships, and whereas the community is encouraged to participate in the ongoing men mentorship of young professionals and support creative thinking and enthusiasm in the city of Wenatchee's future leaders, and whereas Young Professionals Week in the city of Wenatchee is a resource for young professionals in the Wenatchee Valley, Valley to come together, network, and to expose to things they may not have otherwise known to exist in their community. A variety of activities will be offered at different times of the day during Young Professionals Week for everyone to enjoy. Now, therefore, I, Frank J. Kuntz, Mayor of the City of Wenatchee, do hereby proclaim the, the week of September 24th through the 29th, 2018, as Young Professionals Week in the City of Wenatchee and encourage young professionals to attend the many downtown activities <coughs> planned September 24th through the 29th as a way for young professionals to come together and connect and build relationships. In witness whereof, I have caused the seal of the City of Wenatchee to be affixed on this 13th day of September 2018, Frank J. Kuntz, Mayor. Thank you, Council Member Esparza. I see Meredith is back there and others. Come on. And a few committee members. Yes, come on, committee members. <laughs> we brought you? you a water bottle. You did? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> nice white tea wrap to water. Wow. How are you? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So you want to say a few things? Here. Yes, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> is this on? Yep. There you go. Um, well, I'll be respectful of your time. I know you have a full agenda tonight, but um, I have some very hardworking committee members, Marissa Collins from the PAC, as well as Alex from the PAC. Um, we're really excited to have a great committee working on this. The Downtown Association is um, organizing it, and then I have a few members of the committee here, and then we have Confluence Health, who stepped up as a sponsor this year grateful for that and then we also have the pack helping out as well as Red Lion Hotel Sweetwood barbecue um, and if anyone is interested I can leave a few of these maybe here if anybody wants to see the schedule of events you can check it out on the WDA's Facebook page um, for all the information great well thank you Meredith thanks Grace Professionals water, will it make me smarter or younger? <laughs> <laughs> I think it'll make me younger, won't it? And our final proclamation this evening is Gear Up National Week Proclamation. Who's got that one? I do. Thank you, Linda. Whereas the gaining early, gaining early awareness and readiness for undergraduate programs, Gear Up, is a federally funded competitive grant program designed to increase the number of low-income students who are prepare to enter and succeed in post-secondary education and whereas Gear Up serves low-income, minority, and disadvantaged students and their families with underserved communities who might be the first person in their family to go to college and whereas Gear Up provides six or seven year grants to states or partnerships to deliver support and resources to students and their families starting no later than the seventh grade middle school through high school and onward to fulfill their dreams of attaining a post-secondary education and whereas Gear Up includes interventions such as tutoring, mentoring, rigorous academic preparation, financial education, and college scholarships to improve access to higher education for low-income, minority, and disadvantaged first-generation students and their families and whereas Gear Up is built around public-private partnerships, enlisting the formidable resources of government, business, and community groups to support low-income students as they prepare to enter and succeed in college, and whereas the Central Washington University Gear Up SOAR is a partnership of the Central Washington University and Wenatchee School District, and whereas SOAR Gear Up serves 900 students in 10th and 11th grade, and over 25,000 students have been served since 1999, improving graduation rates and higher education accomplishments. Whereas the week of September 23rd, 2018 has been declared National Gear Up Week and whereas the City of Wenatchee is committed to providing a quality education for all students, helping them to achieve their highest potential. Now, therefore, I, Frank J. Kuntz, Mayor of the City of Wenatchee, do hereby proclaim 
the week is September 23rd, 2018, as National Gear Up Week in the city of Wenatchee, Washington, and I urge all citizens to join me in this special observance. In witness whereof, I have caused the seal of the city of Wenatchee to be affixed on this 13th day of September, 2018, Frank J. Kuntz, Mayor. Thank you, Council Member Harold. Gabby? Hey, at all, come on up. Okay, yeah. Ready? Yeah, they haven't changed that yet, have they? Do you want to say a few things? Uh, sure. We're super happy to celebrate our week this year again. Uh, this year, we're sell, uh, serving the classes of 2020 and 2021 at Wenatchee High School. Uh, we're waiting to hear for a new grant that's coming in and might be serving the classes of 2024, 25, and 26. So we're crossing our fingers and saying prayers to get it. We're super happy to be here. I want you to visit Wenatchee High School website and learn that with our efforts and the efforts of everybody at the high school, we have raised uh, graduation rates to 91%. Okay, that is the end of the proclamation. So we now have a number of action items this evening. The first being regarding initial local agreement with Rivercom regarding data hosting. Danielle, City Attorney, I'll turn yes. it over to you. Thank you. So this agreement is about a year in the making. Um, we have four separate municipalities uh, coming together to try to figure out how to deal with the public records that Rivercom believes that they have access to and, and or may own. Um, so there is the data host sharing um, where the four municipalities, East Wenatchee, Wenatchee, Chelan County, and Douglas County, um, there is a server that is physically located in the Rivercom area. The Public Records Act talks about the agency who owns or has the um, maintains the records, that it's their agency records. The problem is with that definition is that the, a lot of the police records that are on that server or flow through that server, Rivercom never uses. They don't have access to, they don't view, um, but because of the public records definition, uh, they are claiming that they maintain it, so it's a Rivercom record for purposes of a public records request. Once uh, the four separate agencies uh, knew what the position Rivercom was taking, none of them were happy with it. <laughs> um, and so we got all of the agencies plus Rivercom in one room, um, and we still couldn't agree on how to do it. Uh, and so it took a year of meetings, multiple drafts of the agreement, and uh, this is what's before you. Chelan County and Douglas County are going to maintain the same um, procedure for their records, which they have appointed a Rivercom um, person as their public records officer for purposes of the records that are in that server. I do not feel comfortable with that, neither did the records department at Wenatchee Police Department. Because when you give your uh, ability to be a public records officer to another agency, that agency then makes that decision whether the records are going to be exempt, whether they are disclosed, whether they are not disclosed. And it, you, you kind of give up your control on what is going to happen, but you would be on the hook for their decision making. East Wenatchee and Wenatchee took a different approach. <clears throat> and what Wenatchee is going to be doing is uh, the agreement says the records that uh, Rivercom never views, uh, the police records that they do not create, um, are not going to be Rivercom records. They're going to remain in the as uh, Wenatchee Police Department records. And we are going to, uh, they are not going to release any of those records. Rather, they're going to notify the requester. We don't have authority to release or review Wenatchee Police Department records. You have to go seek those from the Wenatchee Police Department. Um, but as to their individual records, which would be like the 911 calls and things like that, that's a Rivercom record, um, they will have the ability to release those. 
But if uh, a Wenatchee police number has been assigned to that um, record or to that 911 call, a Wenatchee case number, they will give the Wenatchee Police Department uh, opportunity to go try to stop the release. Because let's say that in relation to maybe the stabbing that occurred on the pedestrian bridge, you know, a few years ago, um, there, there was a Wenatchee case number assigned to that. Uh, Rivercom does not know the status of that case. They did not interview the witnesses who requested anonymity. Um, and they don't, and the Wenatchee Police Department also has the ability to exempt certain records out that Rivercom would not. Um, and so in that scenario, that 911 call that uh, somebody did make a public record request for, Rivercom would notify the police department and the police department would have the ability to go seek a protective order to preserve its investigation before it would be released. Um, and so I think that is the most prudent approach um, for the city. It prevents the city from um, giving out information that uh, should not be uh, given out while an investigation is pending. It also gives the city an opportunity to go to court to seek a protective order. And it does not, uh, the agreement uh, allows the city to retain control of uh, its WPD records. So I am requesting and advising um, the council to approve the agreement and approve uh, the mayor to sign it. Are there any questions? If if it was uh, hosted just with the police department, they'd still have to go get a protection order, correct? Well, River there, If it wasn't hosted there and it was yeah. hosted some he, it, in the police department and they had total control, they still would have to, how would they get that to stop anyway? Well, Rivercom would not then have the position that Rivercom maintains it because right. it wouldn't be in Rivercom's quote unquote possession. Right. Um, that was one of the uh, things that we tossed around. I said, let's go get a shed and put it in the shed so you don't have it anymore. <laughs> um, so uh, in that scenario, if it was, if the server was in the police department and in the police department's possession, then Rivercom would not have that argument that it maintains it. So the access that they had to obtain or view WPD records, then that argument goes out the window and we would not have to go seek a protective order because it would be our record. And Rivercom wouldn't know that we have a protective order, right? If yeah. someone goes to Rivercom and they say, well, here's everything on our server, yeah, right? That's either not redacted or clean, and they don't know that we've got a protective order. They don't know any of that stuff. So it really needs to maintain our records so our attorneys and our police yeah. guys can. Can I ask why we're not just moving the server? Well, Rivercom doesn't want to move the server. This is Keith. If I could uh, interject a little bit, I'm on the Rivercom board. Um, just so you know, this is something we weren't very comfortable with either. The, the problem is, is it isn't so much where the server is located, it's who does the maintaining of them and backing up and working on the servers and things like that is more the issue. And this issue, as uh, Daniel said, came up about a year ago, and we're not comfortable just releasing that data. We don't like being in that position as Rivercom. So I think this agreement that we've come up with is probably the best. It's unfortunate that we couldn't come up with a standard set of procedures that work for all agencies, but because uh, the counties don't have their own uh, public records officer, it just made sense to continue to do that the way it was happening. And from the city standpoint, it makes the most sense to just tell the person who's uh, making the request that they have to contact the police department and it just take it, it just resolves the issue in our opinion. So we think that this is uh, a good document for both of us. Any other questions? Ruth, do you have anything you want to ask? Oh, I, I was just going to ask whether there was a backup mechanism, you know, for human error. That a lawsuit. <laughs> <laughs> so that kind of yeah. Well, with that, then I'll make a motion for the City Council to approve the Interlocal Cooperative Agreement for Rivercom data hosting and authorize the mayor to sign the agreement. Second. I have a motion by Councilmember Poyer and a second by Councilmember Harold to approve and authorize the mayor's signature on the Interlocal Cooperative Agreement for Rivercom data hosting. Discussion. 
Hearing no discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thanks, Danielle. All right, next on our agenda is the Diversity Council Code Update. So we've got Allison and then I think Carrie and Emily are coming up and um, we've got some issues that they want to bring up with respect to our code regarding that and then a discussion I think a little bit about of a potential employee perhaps. So Correct. Allison, Good. I'll turn it over to you. And okay. Allison Williams, Executive Services Director. I'm here with Carrie Gavin, Chair of the Diversity Council, and Emily Gale, Diversity Council member. Um, you have a memo before you tonight that gives you background of the diversity council. They've been around for a number of years now, since 2005, and uh, went through a process of really looking at uh, the work of the council in a retreat this year. And um, as you'll remember, I came forward at the end of the last year with some changes to their code and said more were coming because this work was coming forward. Uh, and so they're here tonight to talk about the changes that they have requested, including one additional change that they asked, that they um, voted on last night. Additionally, um, in the memo, I indicated that a job description came forward. Really, that's an administrative issue. So the council's role is to adopt a budget in which uh, the position may not may or may not be included, but the job description is, itself is an administrative issue. Um, but they want to talk to you about the position and what that might do. And so I'm going to hand that over to Carrie and Emily. We'll okay. ask for your action. Thank you. Good evening. Um, so um, last night we voted that we would like the name. It would be more suiting if it was the Advisory Council on Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Um, and in our code, you have a red line code in your packet. Um, we streamlined our focus and our purpose for the council. Um, so the number one is recommend initiatives to help local government and the community ensure an equitable disbursement of public and private resources. Um, number two, encourage participation by all sectors in the community's decision-making processes, including equal opportunity policies. And number three, provide a forum for all diversity issues, including the annual Americans with Disabilities Act concerns, complaints, and activity, which we plan on having that hearing in October, November. November. Okay, and I'd just like to talk with you a little bit about the, this um, proposed new staffing. And um, we're planning to uh, help facilitate an uh, upcoming job description for your consideration mm -hmm. through the budgeting process. But uh, a little background into this request or this consideration. Um, we had a funded, uh, facilitated retreat in April, and it was um, very productive, and want to thank you for helping to fund that or fund that for us. But at, it, at that time, we really came to a culminating decision that our work couldn't be carried out very well through the process that was in place. We um, view the council more as an advisory, <coughs> but found it very difficult as volunteers to actually um, carry out or put into place. Um, place the work that needs to be done in the city and so we formalized that at the retreat and view that having an assigned staff person who might carry the title of um, diversity and inclusion coordinator um, would help review the city's activities policies and work to ensure representation and an and also um, all people involved in the process. This is consistent with the voluntary compliance agreement that the city signed in March of 2014 that resulted from the federal civil rights audit that was received in 2013. We on the council feel it is time now for the city to increase staffing to carry out this important work for the city. And that having a dedicated staff person to focus on equity and inclusion is imperative that we normalize racial equality and embed equity into the city's operations and services. And we think it's particularly important now that the city is undergoing uh, the plan for districting and moving forward with that, 
that it's a particularly important and timely time to consider this position um, that the council has approved the districting. We know that um, having this position at a, a city of our size will put Wenatchee at the forefront of, of cities of our size in the state of Washington, but that's where we wanna be. We wanna be the best, most inclusive city. Um, we wanna be the best place to live in Washington, and it's clear from both the public comment and proclamations um, this, that you all received today and, and issued that the city values um, the work that we do to improve the relationships within our city, it, it's caring of people who have illness, are low income, and are our future. And um, I'm gonna quote from one of our um, members who had to move away but said, um, we believe, and I'm quoting our member Scott Sherwood, our former member, that it will be of great benefit to the city and more importantly, positively affect so many people in the community that have been traditionally marginalized to um, have some code change as well as this new um, possible position for your consideration. So uh, um, I think we probably, let's deal with the, at least the code stuff mm -hmm. first. So Carrie, you said that the um, Diversity Council asked for a change in the name of the committee. We've got a red line version. Can you tell me what you agreed to last night or what you want us to? Um, you called it the Advisory <coughs> Council on Diversity and? Equity and Inclusion. So we just, so the Advisory Council, I wanna make sure I get this right. Advisory Council on Diversity. Equity. Equity. And Inclusion. And Inclusion, thank you. And really in terms of and the, and the rest of the red line stuff here is all stuff that you've kind of worked your way through right got you okay and and really that's the action that we're asking for tonight the um, the position actually is they they wanted to introduce that obviously that right. has to go through our budgeting process so yeah so I think I guess if it was me I think we at least ought to deal with the ordinance stuff first and see if the council is willing to make those changes and then we can just have a quick discussion about mm -hmm. sort of our budget process and what that looks like mm -hmm. and how we sort of make decisions on new hires so, uh, council? This is yeah. Council Member Huffaker. I had one question. I was uh, curious why the decision to remove a uh, Wenatchee area student was made. As I recall, the discussion of the committee was that um, that would certainly be a consideration, but they wanted to simplify the membership. Is that correct? Yeah, I think it was just a by listing certain people or people of certain status, we might um, inadvertently eliminate or not welcome other people. So we just took those it, um, tech it, lists it, off, if you will. Yeah, it doesn't prevent you from having a student right. on the no. board. It just doesn't make it mandatory. Right. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. So any questions? Again, I sort of read over the revised uh, uh, chapter 1.50 talking about the Diversity Council. I looked at the changes. I didn't have anything specifically that um, stuck out to me as something that I wouldn't want to adopt. Um, so Excuse, the, Mr. Mayor, this, this yeah. is Mark Kulas. I want to go back to Council Member Huffaker's question regarding a Wenatchee area student, and, and, and it's just simply this. Um, I, I don't. I, I have not called up our guidelines for persons that serve on our committees and boards. Is there a qualification that they be a registered voter of the city? And, and the reason I raise that, if there is, that could preclude a number of students who have not reached the age of 18. So I just just kind of kind of a point of uh, of uh, of uh, information or concern there. I don't. We, so, but we have had a couple of committees that have had a student on them. I know the uh, Art Council has had one, and, and if I'm correct, you've had a student in the past on the on the mm -hmm. yeah, and on the Parks advisory board. board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I don't remember yes, what, ever what, seeing what, what, an application what that asks yep. for no. you know, whether you're a registered voter or not. No. Yeah, and see, and I, I don't know if that's the case. And, and the reason I bring it up that if that was a qualification, 
when we say deleting this doesn't mean that a student couldn't be appointed. If we have that requirement in another location, it would preclude a student from being appointed. Right. So I think I, I, I don't think we have anything that says that members of our diversity because or member of our uh, any of our uh, voluntary boards and advisory boards have to be a registered right. voter. Some we say they have to be citizens of the city of Wenatchee. <clears throat> Some we say just of the region. Right. I don't know that there's one that says they have to be a registered voter. Not to my memory. Dave, you're our. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. So Dave Erickson says not for parks. Yeah. So let's go with the assumption. Yeah, I, 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 I was referring to the uh, guidelines that we have for appointments to boards and commissions that are not codified, but they are part of the guidelines council adopted, which includes the uh, standard application form. That's all. Okay. All right, anything else? Any other sort of discussion items? If not, I would entertain a motion. Your Honor, I will uh, make a motion to approve ordinance number 2018-27, amending chapter 1.50 of the Wenatchee City Code relating to the Advisory Committee on Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Second. We have a motion by Council Member Esparza, a second by <clears throat> Council Member Poyer to adopt Ordinance 2018-27, amending Chapter 1.50 of the Wenatchee Code relating to the Advisory Council on Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, and I'm guessing by that changing the name to the Advisory Council on Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. <laughs> Tongue twister. Yes, <laughs> I like the uh, I like the uh, changes because it just simplified and it, fo it narrowly focused more on what the kind of work you're doing. So. Thank you. All right, we have a motion. We have a second discussion. Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. All right. So with respect to city employees, uh, the city's um, budget process is just now starting. We'll be getting a request from our um, all of our department heads. This will be included in that. It will come through Allison's request. Uh, I don't know if we have seven, eight, nine, ten employee asks and a couple million dollars from Public Works, and we will work this all into the the discussion. Um, and we will let I'll let you guys know when the finance committee takes that up in particular, because there'll be a time and a place where we have that sort of discussion. Okay. Um, and we'll make sure that you're invited to that to sort of hear how, how we go about that process. So okay. we will take it seriously. We'll put it in our system. Um, sometimes we have two new hires. Sometimes we have three, something like that. But we'll we'll put it into the system and see where it goes. All right. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank, thank you very thanks, much. Thanks, ladies, for being here tonight. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Allison. All right. Mr. Erickson, Department of Ecology Remedial Action Grant. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Council. This is Dave Erickson, Parks and Recreation Director for the City. And this evening I'm requesting authorizing the Mayor's signature and acceptance of the grant agreement TCPRA 2018-WENATC-00035 wow. between the City and the Department of Ecology. Uh, this is a $900,000 grant for the Saddle Rock Remedi Remediation Project, which we talked about a couple of weeks ago and gave you all that background information on that then. Uh, it's work that's being required by the Department of Ecology. Uh, in your packet, you've got the standard Department of Ecology agreement. Uh, it's been reviewed by the city attorney and the finance committee. And if approved this evening, we'll have an RFP going out in a couple of weeks uh, once everything is signed uh, and get that project kicked off and started. And this is probably phase one of at least two phases because the total cost to do the cleanup the way ecology wants it done is a couple million bucks? Correct. Okay. Yep. And with this, we'll do the lower part first? Right. Yeah, we'll do the, uh, the plan is to do, there's some additional testing and some additional uh, engineering that has to be done on the lower half. And so this would take, there's four lower waste rock piles. So essentially, if you've ever been up to Saddle Rock and you go up the old, the old access off the end of the Circle Street, um, to the right, um, on that first steep part, there's a, actually a hole there in the ground and, and a waste rock pile. You round the corner and go up to that main first flat area, mm -hmm. and there, the other three spots are right up there. So we'll 
go through, take care of those lower ones first. We'll uh, hopefully have some lessons learned before we tackle those really steep areas up over the top of Saddle Rock on the other side uh, and those 35% slopes that we're going to have to deal with to get up there. So is there going to be like a lot of disturbance on, of the ground? Will you be able to see a difference? There will be, yeah. So those those waste rock piles are all be cleaned up. Um, that lower area, for example, right when you first go up, there's a, a chunk of the hill that's going to be going away, oh. uh, and then dirt brought in over the top and then replanted with native uh, species to restore the habitat. The other thing would be uh, as we work our way up the hill, we'll be um, regrading the trail so it actually drains properly putting the stormwater back into the natural drainage channels, putting in culverts where we need to, and then resurfacing the trail too. So that Grand Canyon that you have kind of up in the middle of the trail, hopefully will be eliminated uh, when everything is said and done. Yeah, and once it's all done, in essence, there'll be a, in essence, a brand new trail that will be wider, in way better shape, will drain better, will get less of the ruts, mm -hmm. and will be a really a way better experience five years down the road. But at some point, it will be a, way better hiking experience than it currently is. And this will open us up then once this is taken care of to do other uh, restoration work up on Saddle Rock itself. So I know the land trust has just been sitting there waiting for this to happen. Right. So they can go up and decommission those unsustainable trails mm -hmm. and then build uh, more sustainable foot foot trails, not the wide group ones, but the, mm -hmm. the more single track trails. So is the park <clears throat> going to be closed for a very long time? It will be. Um, and we have a maximum window that we can be closed in the, of 180 days at a time uh, to stick with our RCO grant requirements back when we acquired the property. Um, by the time we finish this project, that policy will likely be changed at the state level. But at least initially, we're, we're kind of capped at a 180 day window. So we're trying to plan this to occur the actual on the ground dirt work. Uh, the heat of the summer, so August, September, with planting then to follow, hopefully in October, November, uh, gives the plants a better chance to survive them too. So there's some thought this will happen in 2019? And that's the hope. It's really aggressive to get there. Okay. Um, but if not 19, then it would obviously be 20. 20. And 21, right. We would do an extension and, and continue on. And just uh, as the Finance Committee discussed today in your council packet, there's a, something called the recipient share, which is $300,000, which is nothing more than staff time. So there's not going to be any city money going into this project. This is all Department of Ecology money. All right. Any, uh, any discussion? If not, I'd entertain a motion. Your Honor, I'd like to move for City Council to authorize the Mayor to sign the Toxic Cleanup Remedial Action Grant Program Agreement between the City of Wenatchee and State of Washington Department of Ecology for the Gold Knob Prospect Site. Second. Motion by Councilmember Harold, second by Councilmember Markhart uh, to authorize the Mayor to sign the Toxic Cleanup Remedial Action Grant <coughs> Program Agreement between the City of Wenatchee and the State of Washington Department of Ecology regarding Gold Knob Prospect Site. Discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, David. Great. Thank you. GSA lease, Mr. King. We finally have one. Finally have one. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Steve King, Economic Development Director. Yes, we have been working on this for a while. Um, last year, I guess it was about December 2017, we submitted an offer to GSA for leasing this space out to Social Security Administration. And uh, it's taken this long to get a approval process, but we're finally there. And so we have a lease document, a nice big thick one that uh, um, comes with the uh, GSA protocols. And so we're, um, we've reviewed it. It is in line with the offer that we submitted. So. Uh, we're asking for council to approve the mayor to um, sign this lease. We are asking it at substantial form. We have a couple of questions on some scheduling uh, provisions, so we might change the schedule a little bit. But for all practical purposes, it's here and ready to be signed. Just sort of um, for those that weren't on the finance committee, just a quick update on sort of timing and sure uh, that sort of stuff in terms of that seems to be push down the road just a little bit? Yeah, push down the road a little bit, which is uh, actually going to give us the time we need. Part of uh, preparing this building is we need to do some work to uh, prepare the shell 
of the building. So we'll be designing uh, the shell improvements and waiting for Social Security to give us their tenant improvement designs uh, this winter and into next <laughs> spring. And we'd anticipate going into construction maybe uh, summer of next year towards the late spring or summer of next year. And then GSA uh, has some time to accept the space. And so they, the schedule they gave us anticipates them moving in here maybe in March of 2020. Um, that's okay. They're in the federal building right now. We're collecting rent there from them. And they'll, uh, they'll be moving out of the federal building about the time we start construction. So the timing... Timing's okay. We don't want to delay it anymore, but it's uh, we're we're off and running. Okay. You keep forgetting that you want them in this building, but they're paying us in that building, in the space that we just bought from local tell. So, yeah. And I'm and I'm sure we've all read all whatever hundred pages of the lease in its <laughs> finest detail. <laughs> I got through like six pages, and it's like I really can't do any more than that, but. I would uh, entertain a motion if we had one. I'll make a motion for the city council to authorize the mayor to negotiate and sign a lease with Government Services Administration for 129 South Chelan Avenue. Second. second. Got a motion by Council Member Poyer and a second by Council Member Esparza uh, to authorize the mayor to negotiate and sign a final lease document with GSA for 129 South Chelan Avenue. Discussion? Steve, um, I, I must have been really uh, needing some sleep last night because I read quite a bit of it. Um, I was curious about the terms of the lease when it actually starts. And then in the first section, 1.03, it looks like uh, we're doing the first six months of the lease free of charge to them. Yes, that's that's correct. That's what we put in the offer. The terms of the lease, the uh, lease commences on the date they take possession and occupy. So it would be sometime in that 2020 period um, after the tenant improvements are done. And, and what did you say the date was that they were moving out of the federal building? It'd be about the same time. So in, in the uh, um, spring of 2020. Okay. So, so ba basically, they're going to terminate one lease and immediately sign this other one, but then they get six months while they're moving in, or well, I'm not right. sure what that six months was. Yeah, that was. About. Yeah, the, that's a good question. The six months was. So when we originally put our offer in, I thought there'd be a little bit more overlap, and so um, there's probably going to be a two month overlap. So um, if I was doing this again, I would do a two month free and not a six month, but. That's what we put in our offer. But I think you, <clears throat> the, the, everything's getting signed now, though. So everything's signed. get out of it. Okay. Yeah, everything's signed now. Yeah. yeah. No, I, that, that, was, that was clear. I just, again, yeah. it was, I was just wondering why we were doing that. Um, you know, just, and you're right, it does uh, make it everything a lot better that they're going to continue to lease space from us in the federal building. That way we don't have an empty building that's, you know, technically not being paid for they're paying for it just by staying in the federal building. So the, that, that was the only other thing that really jumped out to me is why we were doing that. So the only other thing you said you were negotiating is just some of the schedule for you know, waiting for their plans and things like that. So everything else yes. is as is in the lease. Yep. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other discussion? So we do have a motion. We do have a, a second. We've had discussion. Hearing no further discussion. All those in favor of the motion say aye. Uh, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. On call engineering. Your Honor, this is, uh, yep. this is Council Member Kulas. I, I need to sign out to uh, head to an evening meeting. Okay. We will, uh, for okay. the record. We'll all later. All right. Thank you, Mark. So, uh, Tammy, you got that for the record? The council member Kulas just got off the phone. Jacob, RH2 engineering contract. Yes, sir. So, Jacob, Jacob Heiler, engineering services manager. Um, over the last several months, um, there's been a, uh, a need has developed for us to augment um, our engineering staff in order to deliver a variety of projects um, that have been added to our work plan. Um, those projects range from 
uh, some transportation facility um, upgrade or planning studies in the in the Cascade foothills to um, a bunch of improvements along the uh, waterfront, including potential parking lots um, and then some aesthetic gateway improvements as well. So um, really kind of a wide range of, of different projects that um, we have a need for um, and, and simply don't have the, the personnel to deliver um, in a timely fashion. So um, back in June, um, this item was taken to the Finance Committee um, with a request for a $350,000 budget to um, bring a consultant on board um, to, to tackle some of these projects for us. Um, and then a request for qualifications was issued um, on July 10th. Um, the city received eight proposals from different engineering firms um, around the region and, and the state. Um, and RH2 was selected as the most qualified uh, consultant for this project. Um, so with that, I ask for, for authorization to uh, negotiate and sign a contract with RH2. You anticipating them doing work um, in the next 30 days or 60 days, starting on one or two of these sort of projects? Yeah, as soon as we can. Okay. Um, there's some projects that, that definitely need to be a bit more defined, um, but there's a couple of them. Um, the Linden Tree yes. parking lot, for instance, and uh, potentially that Foothill study as well are, are, are hot button issues for us right now. So, and I think that the idea behind this is we have so many projects and so many things we're trying to get to that you know, staff just doesn't have the time to when it kind of made sense as, as council, we tend to make decisions of yes, we want to get that done. And yes, we want to get that done. And absolutely, we want to get that done yet. We're having a hard time keeping staff. Um, they're so busy. So this is a good way to get some of the engineering done and get some of these projects to the finish line. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully a bunch of them in 2019, including some of the parking stuff we've talked about and other stuff. So <clears throat> it, it seems to be a reasonable way to do this because otherwise it just gets on the list and so hopefully we'll be able to knock some stuff out with this. So just a question for finance committee: Does it uh, does it make sense to move forward with this rather than delaying the project? I mean, I'm just trying to figure out this is this is going to be an extra cost that we're going to have to bear just to get these projects underway. Does it make sense to do that or to have some of these projects delayed? I, I, I would say from my perspective, Keith, you look at like parking at Linden, that's been one we've had on our docket for four or five years. It's LRF funded. We're going to do the parking lot uh, down and around the Pibus market. This seems to be the right time to do that. Um, we've got a lot of development in the foothills. There's been another discussion with Mr. Clennon and a developer to develop the rest of his property that needs a secondary access road of some variety. Uh, you look at these things, um, and these are all sorts of ones that just the nature of where we're at sort of require us to be in the middle of um, just because of the timing of where we're at. And um, so uh, I really think um, if, if we could, some of these, if we could kick them off, uh, it would make sense to not do them. Um, but I think at least for those two or three, we really need to start kind of working on them right now. I, I, the, the one on the second page, the property demolition, property management, I toured, uh, the wash dot site two days ago with Steve and Allison and the wash dot folks, uh, million and a half bucks to tear that building down. Right. And, and we don't have the staff to figure out the engineering on that and, um, there's just lots of sort of stuff that's going to need help with. So, um, it, it just seems like having these folks do it for us and us monitoring them is the only way we're going to get this stuff done. Keith, I, from my perspective, I also didn't want to hire, have an employee because this is, can be eliminated for future items. And so I kind of see it as a cost savings and kicking it either that or kicking it down the road like you said i have and, to agree and, and we are well, well and that's and that's more my question is is are are some of these things you know the the the, the parking lot yeah we would like to get it paved and taken care of but is is it critical to spend extra money to get it done and that and that you know if the if the finance committee weighed all the options and everybody's okay and on board with it then i i won't stand in the way and i and i think the other thing is we're we, how many 
one project engineer we're trying to hire or two and we're having a hard time getting job applicants. Um, engineering is hard to find right now. It is. Um, so it's one of those things you could say, well, let's do it internal. Let's go and hire two folks. And by the time you get them in and get them trained and then someone leaves and the next thing you know, we're, um, it is, it just seems like this is sort of uh, the way it needs to get done. I see Gary Owen has joined us. Do you have something you'd like to say? <laughs> yeah, I would just like to add for clarification for Council Member uh, Huffaker. These projects, they're, they're all going to have a budget, and they're all going to have an engineering budget and a construction budget. So whether, you know, regardless of who the design is, if it's in-house, us, or a consulting firm like RH2, like we recommend here, um, there's no change to the budget. There's not additional cost for the project. Right. Because we're going to be engineering anyhow, whether it's our staff. Oh, okay. Well, that, yeah. that's actually the best clarification I've had. So thank you, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> I think the other part of it is. So, so really, it doesn't, it doesn't change the budget by doing this, which is, which is yeah, no-brainer. Thank you. Okay. And the other part of it is, is the desire to, the places that we're developing now are hard to develop. And so um, the transportation network has been identified as deficient for uh, substantial time. And so we've, we've talked through this a number of times in our Public Works Economic Development Committee. And so uh, in order to further work on our housing issues, this was pretty critical. We are stretched very thin right now. Yep. And still getting a lot done, though. Mm-hmm. Well, Mayor, I'd they like are. to. Oh, sorry. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion for the city council to authorize the mayor to negotiate with RH2 Engineering for professional engineering services necessary to augment city engineering staff and further authorize the mayor to sign the agreement on behalf of the city. <coughs> Second. Motion by Councilmember Poyer, second by Councilmember Harold, to authorize the mayor to negotiate and sign a contract with RH2 Engineering for engineering services with respect to a number of projects on behalf of the city. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thanks, Jacob. Thanks, Gary. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Um, we okay to keep going? Anybody need a break or should we keep plugging away? We Let's keep going. Okay, let's go. All right, so we got a couple issues with respect to Broadview. Phase 1X, that's 9, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. right. yeah. My Roman numerals, I'm not quite as good at those as I used to be. So, Glenn and Rob, turn it over to you guys. We're actually going to try to tackle this. As we're, there's two things on the agenda, but they're for the same project. So okay. the first thing on the agenda is we're seeking uh, council's approval to authorize the mayor to sign the improvement uh, bond agreement. Uh, we're still wait. We've agreed on the bond amount. There, we're waiting for some signatures on that. So once that's been reviewed by our city engineer and the city attorney, that would then allow the recording of the subdivision to move forward. So that's the first thing we're seeking. On this, on this Broadview, uh, Broadview four plat. Yeah, uh, so it's Broadview Phase Nine Block B. It's a plat alteration, which is a means to make a change to a condition. In this case, it's a change to an access easement that would eliminate an easement. Um, let's see, do, do, do. remove an access easement from Maiden Lane to Lot 18, and then revising access for six, 17, and 18, and 19 off Broad uh, Crest Court. And there's two components really to the hearing examiner's conditions. There's the infrastructure component, which is the need for the improvement agreement. And then the next item before you is the actual uh, plat, which we'll talk about next. And both are necessary to uh, satisfy the hearing examiner's conditions, which were set in April. So you're asking for two things. One is the development agreement, and second is the authority for me to sign the MILAR once he gets all the signatures that are needed. Correct, and the okay. only deficient items are the signatures. We ha you have the, in your packet, you right. saw the actual alteration, and then the only other thing that has to be added is a, some stormwater co uh, covenant reference on that, uh, which can easily be done. The big thing is, as you could see, there are quite a few signatures to be obtained, and they were, I believe, shy of one or two. Yeah. Uh, so if, uh, on both of those, if the mayor could be authorized. Um, this is one of these things that's been a real pain for our staff for a while, um, trying to get this to the finish line. Uh, no, 
nothing we've done, just a developer that's kind of just not doing things the right sort of way. So we've actually, this is a good thing for him because if you give me the authority, you know, he doesn't have it signed yet. So if he gets it signed today, I can sign it tomorrow morning. If he gets it signed on Monday, I can sign it Tuesday and record because we have someone ready to build a house and we won't give him a building permit because there's an easement running right underneath his house that they haven't gotten rid of. Oh. Right? So this is sort of cleaning up and there's a, someone ready to build a house and they're ready to pour concrete. And so um, we're trying to be nice to the developers here and try to get out a little bit ahead of it. And the staff's done a great job working with them. Um, so this is one of those sort of awkward situations that I think we're trying to make the best of here. And, um, so but besides the developer, we're doing the right thing for the person trying to build the house, which is not the developer. Right. Correct. Yes. Okay. I just want to make. Yes. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> Although the developer may be the contractor building the house, but he's ultimately not the landowner. Yeah. So it's again one of those situations that I think we've done a great job trying to get us to this point, and um, we would have loved to have brought it in all signed and sealed and delivered, and it's just not going to be that way. But I'm not going to sign it until it is. But this will speed it up by at least a couple of weeks. So any, any questions for staff? If not, I guess there's two separate motions that we'll need. Your Honor, I move for City Council to authorize the Mayor to sign the improvement agreement for the Platt Alteration Broadview Phase 9 Block B after the City Engineer and City Attorney have reviewed and approved the improve, <coughs> improvement agreement and surety. Second. Motion by Councilmember Harrell, second by Councilmember Markhart to authorize the Mayor to sign the improvement agreement for the Platt Alteration Broadview Phase 9 Block B after the City Engineer and City Attorney have reviewed appropriate documents. Discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And the next item is regarding the Mylar, which is item G. And so we would entertain a motion just to authorize my signature once they're all done. Your Honor, I will make a motion for the City Council to authorize the Mayor to sign the final Mylar for the alteration of Broadview Phase 9, Block B, also known as P Alt 1702, once the improvement agreement has been accepted and approved by the Public Works Department. Second. Motion by Councilmember Esparza, second by Councilmember Harold to authorize the Mayor's signature on the final Mylar. For the alteration of Broadview Phase <coughs> 9 Block B, also known as P Alt 17 02, once the improvement agreement has been accepted and approved by Public Works. Discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thanks, gentlemen. Thank you. I'm gone tomorrow. If he brings it in, I can't sign it. Okay. So I'll be back Monday, though. All right, so we have one public hearing item this evening. This is regarding the uh, comprehensive water system plan adoption. So public hearings, we will first hear from staff. Once staff is presented to us and the council has asked questions, we'll turn over any member of the audience that would wish to address the council. And then we'll turn over to the council for any action <coughs> that they may have. So we've got John and Rob with us. So <coughs> turn it over to you guys. Uh, good evening, Council. Uh, this is Rob Jammerman, Public Works Director, and uh, John Riccardi, our Utility Manager. Uh, I think all of you have met him. He's been with the city as a project engineer, is now our Utility Manager. And then we've also got Ryan Peterson with uh, RH2 Engineering, who has done all the heavy lifting on this long process to get this water comp plan to the finish line. So uh, I'm going to let John walk through a quick PowerPoint here to kind of Kind of refresh your memory of where, where we've been and where we are tonight and then we will talk about the a couple ordinances so go ahead John. all right thank you guys i'll go ahead and uh, give a presentation on the comprehensive water system plan for the city of wenatchee uh, this plan includes two volumes one pertains to the city facilities and one pertains to the re regional facilities um, so kind of the overview of this presentation, uh, we have some goals. We want to kind of, we want to give an overview of a water system plan, the history of where we've been, where we're at, and kind of where we're going with this. So um, the elements of a comprehensive water system plan, um, 
it's essential that we uh, have a supply that can meet our existing and future uh, demands. Uh, with that supply, we have to meet all the applicable water quality standards. Um, and in order to do that, we have to have a knowledge of our system operationally and the maintenance needs um, through condition evaluations. And we also need to consider future expansions, expansion. Uh, with all that, it's really important to understand the financial health of the system. Um, so that's kind of what makes up the elements of these plans. Uh, so why do we do these plan updates? Um, the last update was done in 2012. Uh, state law requires that it's done every six years. And uh, beyond that, the most important reason I feel we do these is to meet the needs of our customers. So we have to identify necessary improvements through in-depth evaluation um, to make sure that the city infra infrastructure is meeting, meeting our customer needs. So um, here's a timeline of the Water Comprehensive Plan. Um, back in December of 2016, the city staff gave a presentation to the council, or sorry, we, my, my apologies. So we first select, uh, put out the plan for bid and selected a consultant. RH2 was uh, selected with FCS Group. Um, again, the last plan was updated in 2012. This 2018 update um, allows us to meet the law that it's updated every six years. So then uh, fast forward to 20, February 15th of 2018. Uh, the city staff gave a presentation to the council. This included information on the age of our system, uh, capital projects that we have planned and their associated costs, and a financial history of the water utility. On April 26th, um, the consultant gave a financial analysis. Uh, what that showed was the operating expenses, the capital improvement projects, and the debt services exceeded our revenues. Um, so anytime you have that case, it's a, it, it creates a necessity for a rate increase. Uh, so FCS Group uh, presented a 9.5% uh, rate increase for the first three years with a 6% rate increase per year thereafter. Uh, the reason the first three years are higher is this was to establish funding for the second source uh, capital improvement project. What was also presented was a system, uh, an increased system investment fee where our base fee is currently uh, $400 and what was presented was a $3,500 fee. The council's feedback was they um, proposed coming back with an alternative and the alternative that was established was a 6% rate increase per year with the system investment fee to be phased in over five years. On August 23rd, 2018, um, city staff met with the finance committee to present that alternative a uh, 6% rate increase per year. Uh, one thing to note on this is the second source will require an addition, additional rate increase when the project is confirmed. Then system, uh, system investment fee was to be phased in over five years. Uh, the Finance Committee's direction was they had no objections to this proposal. Not too long after that, the city staff presented to the Public Works Economic Development Committee the same information with the 6% rate increase and the system investment fee being phased in over five years. The direction given to the staff through, the public, uh, for, through that presentation to the Public Works Economic Development Committee was they were, had no ob objections to the 6% rate increase per year. Um, it was desired to have the base investment fee remain unchanged at $400 with a meter equivalent charge. Uh, the system investment fee was also proposed to be waived for any project that is proposing a multifamily development. So that brings us to tonight, um, <clears throat> where we are requesting that the council adopt the draft plan to be submitted to the Department of Health for review, uh, to adopt Ordinance 2018-23, which um, is the 6% per year rate increase with uh, the understanding that this, when the second source project is confirmed, there will be an additional rate increase required uh, to have a base investment fee remain at 400 with a meter equivalent char charge and to waive the system investment fee for any project that proposes a multifamily development. So uh, moving forward for this, if that ordinance is adopted, the rate increases will go into effect January 1st. Um, we'll begin to implement our capital improvement project plan. And the goal of the rate increase is to create a sustainable, self-funded pipe replace replacement program for the city. 
And at that point, I'd like to open it up for comments and questions. So pipe replacement, does this plan basically say what year, what pipes, 2020, yeah. these pipes will be done, mm -hmm. 2021, these pipes will be done, and we're yeah. starting, we'll start seeing that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Each plan develops about a 10-year capital improvement plan where we have specific projects identified in each year with the appropriate costs for those okay. projects. I just forgot. What's the base fee now? I know it's, it's going to currently change 400. 400 is oh, so the current. Yep. Yeah. Oh, and so, so staying it's staying at 400 with a, a meter customer equivalent factor. And I, it, it, uh, it steps up. So a, a three quarter inch meter will remain at 400. That's the base. Oh. But if you need a one inch meter, it goes to 600. Okay. If you need an inch and it just, that was really the only difference on that system investment yeah. fee. I do like that there's no fee for multifamily, so we can anything we can to encourage more ho housing, more multi units is what it's, I enjoy. I'm glad to see that. Yeah, we talked about it quite, and it was sort of an interesting discussion because, like, you know, we're meeting with Mr. Widener on the Widener Apartments, met with him today, and I think we did a sort of working towards a deal. But, you know, every little penny counts. And, you know, in three or four years under the existing plan, his water connection fee would have been 60 grand. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not really incentivizing development. And under this fee, it will be zero. Mm -hmm. And we're sort of, sort of encouraging multifamily residents, which I think we need. And so we do. And it doesn't make a huge dent or addition to the utility. And as I told the, the guys, you know, bring it back in a couple of years. Let's see where we're at, how many people mm -hmm. have done it. And it will be nice at some point to have a standard investment fee. That means we've caught up on our housing and we don't really have those sorts of issues anymore but until we're got the shortage it sort of makes sense to try to fit this in the best that we can so any questions for uh our staff on either the plan or the uh, rate increases hearing none i'll turn it over to any member of the audience who would just wish to address the council regarding the comprehensive water system plan adoption or the rate increases Seeing no takers, I will turn it back over to the council for their action. Looks like there's two <laughs> separate actions. The owner will move for city council to approve the drafts city of Wenatchee comprehensive water system plan for submittal to the Department of Health. Second. Motion by Councilmember Harold, second by Councilmember Poyer to approve the draft of the city of Wenatchee comprehensive plan system for submittal to the Department of Health. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And the next is regarding Ordinance 2018-23. I'd like to make a motion uh, to the council to uh, to approve Ordinance number 2018-23, amending Chapter 9.12 WCC relating to water rules and regulations. Second. We have a motion by Councilmember Markhart, a second by Councilmember Harold to approve Ordinance 2018-23 amending Chapter 9.12 WCC relating to water rules and regulations. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> motion carries. Thanks, gentlemen. Thank Thanks, John. Thank you. Thanks, Ryan, for all your work and getting this to the finish line and, and a lot of work and Let's get those pipes updated and sort of ready to go. I'm, and I, and I hope we get a second source that works, right? Um, yeah, hopefully. I'm not going to hold the second source on your, you know, just for you particularly, but just in general, it would be nice. Well, you probably are going to. Yeah, well. If those are the spots you're telling us to dig, then I'm going to hold you responsible. Yeah. We got another meeting next week to talk about it. So. Okay, good. All right, mayor's report. Um, I'd have to go look at my calendar for this week and see what I've done. Um, we, uh, we met earlier this week with, uh, uh, Washington State Historical, what's his title? State Historic Preservation Officer, Nick Yes. Mann. So mm -hmm. Nick was in town working with us on our second story sort of developments and the fire code and some of that stuff. So it was a good meeting trying to figure out how to adopt to the, there's fire code that says we have to sprinkle second floors and do some of that. Some of our downtown business owners think that's a little expensive. So we've just had a really nice meeting with him trying to sort of figure out solutions. 
I did tour the um, WashDOT buildings on Tuesday with Allison and Steve just to see what it is that we're sort of getting. Uh, the size of the buildings are amazing. They're still full of furniture, right? Because they all got new furniture in the new spot. So there's just rooms and rooms and rooms of engineering offices that are just full. Uh, the old building where they used to repair all the dump trucks and put all the trucks in is pretty incredible. It looks a little bit like the Pibus Market on the inside. Oh, Great really? big, tall. There's a huge crane that comes through the middle of it. There's those mm. glass windows up that would open. So I made the mistake. I saw Mike Walker yesterday, and I said, "You got to go look at this building." So I apologize, but he's going to go <laughs> wander through the 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 back part of the Washdot building because um, I'm not the person, but somebody with the right could make something pretty cool out of that back building. Um, I still think it needs to come down, but um, we did meet with Mr. Widener today. You know, we've been talking about trying to get a deal on the apartments. I think the meeting went well. I think we have the basis for a development agreement. So at some point, I'll talk to you guys about the sorts of things we talked about. Um, I think the, the, the major point would be the city leasing parking in that structure. So if we lease, and just for sort of city employee parking, mm -hmm. since we're going to be in the federal building, instead of doing additional parking around there, if we leased some parking from him, that would give him a revenue source that he could then use to get to the finish line. That's a great idea. So just, again, a concept sort mm -hmm. of we're talking about. Um, <clears throat> We're going to have to spend some money over there on parking. We're going to do all the street stuff we've talked about and the angled in parking and the rest of it. But um, it would be, you know, just between 7.45 a.m. and 5.15 p.m., Monday through Friday. But if that way, you know, city employees can park there. Police department people can park there. There's some issues with parking there. So maybe we structure some sort of a parking deal that gets him enough revenue to help cover the cost of some of the parking that he's got to build. Yeah. might be something that works out for us. So um, cautiously optimistic that we're going to get to an agreement that I would recommend that you approve. Um, so we'll see. It's um, He seemed, I was pretty positive after that meeting. He didn't start throwing stuff at us. And I, I, I think, I think, and of course, then we gave him two other places to go look at while he's leaving town. So <laughs> including the PUD property at Fifth Street. So I said, go take a look at that when you're leaving. So, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, anything else, Allison, that's, I know we're, Brad's got preliminary budget stuff. He's sort of working through the finance committee. We'll see the first run in two weeks, mm -hmm. right? Our first run of a balanced budget. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think we're sort of putting our process together on that. So the finance committee will look at that and then start working our way through. The PUD meeting on Monday. So, yes. so if any of you want to come meet with the PUD commissioner, Steve Wright is on vacation, but we are going to talk about parking. It's been a big deal to the PUD commissioner, so we're going to put together a presentation. I know Steve and Allison and I are going. They wanted to have a joint meeting of both councils. I sort of said I didn't think that the parking level raised to a spot where both councils need to get in a room. But you're all invited to come if you would like. What time is the meeting? Is it the 10 o'clock on, uh, on Monday or Tuesday? Monday. Monday. 10 a.m.? Yeah, at the PUD headquarters. And we're going to do a little presentation and sort of go over the old waterfront plan. And I think they got some specific issues about stuff around the Pipus Market. I think they got some specific issues about stuff around Riverside 9. I think they got some specific issues about stuff around the Town Toyota Center. So we just have to sit down and work with them and kind of talk to them. And I, th I think it'll be fine. So if we, we have are, a quorum going, we would need to notice it tomorrow. Yeah. Just need to know. I will go. Okay. Yeah, I plan on being there. If I can't, I will call you tomorrow, but I'm pretty sure I can go. Okay. Uh, what else, Allison? So just um, for <coughs> those council members who have districts, we have postcards that are hitting all the households in your districts. They're in the mail. Um, Lyle requested, we haven't done cards for the at large, so we'll have to talk about that. Okay. Um, the uh and so linda for this for example is going to be at fiestas this weekend it's her district we did a little overrun of cards it was inexpensive to do that um 
and uh, and then there is the county pop-up event, um, the event that a uh, group of us at the city and then the county have been working on the closure of Washington Street. Brooklyn Holton is just... What two days are they doing that? I want to get those on my calendar. It's Wednesday the, the 26th, and Brooklyn said the bulk of it is probably 10 to 3-ish. Um, and then the... That will be the closure, and then the design of that intersection will be up for those two days. Correct? Okay. Is that right? Uh, I think the closure is on Thursday. I thought it was Wednesday. It's Wednesday first with just the intersection laid out, and I think the closure. On Thursday? Yeah. I keep mixing, I keep flip flopping. Yeah. We'll verify. <laughs> Well, Al get it on, Allison, uh, that's Facebook what Brooklyn told us. As an event, uh, night, so it should have all the details then. Okay. Thursday? Okay. So I did tell you right in the first place. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, and that's, I think that's what an interesting way just to see what things, how things might work. The county is bringing, uh, inviting all of their employees, so we could also, um, they're going to have cupcakes and cornhole, <laughs> which is kind of fun. And uh, we'll have a layout uh, looking at kind of that whole street network from Methow Park to Memorial Park um, and get ideas from people on connecting the courthouse campus and the federal building. So should be some good opportunities. At the end of the day, though, if, they, if, the, if we accept and the county agrees to shut down the street between the courthouse, you know, there's, there's going to be expensive <clears throat> for the county to because mm -hmm. they're going to want to change the atmosphere in there and put in more, you know, landscaping is going to be expensive. And then we got to look at um, Palouse and uh, Chelan because be a lot of cars going to Palouse and Chelan. That's already got the coming out of the Apple Blossom Festival and the uh, museum. Oh, yeah. And then it's got Palouse. And then it, so it's got an awkward, right? If you keep sending people down there, I okay if it gets fixed, but it just seems like that's a. It's awkward now. It's, yeah. And I think it would do a lot of good. At, I think it would. Yeah, go I think ahead, it Keith. would be important to do some traffic counts during that time that we have that street closed and yeah. see where that traffic all ends up going. So yeah, I mean, and they're and I think they're planning on just to see where it gets pushed to. Yeah, and they're they're planning on doing traffic counts and doing all that. So uh, that that'll happen. But it it fixes that intersection at Arondo and Washington and uh, 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 all that you know that sort of weird five way right if that street is closed it sort of fixes part of that intersection i don't think that intersection concerns them as much as just them going between buildings mm -hmm. and almost getting killed crossing crossing washington street <laughs> so that'll be an interesting thing yeah. so next week we have uh, a work session we've got three or four items for next week so i think we're probably good to go with that Council members, anything on your, from your neck of the woods? I have a couple things. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit next week about Masala. It was an amazing experience, life changing. I, we could learn a lot from their society, and um, I really appreciate the opportunity to go. It was it was amazing. I would encourage everyone to go. Um, <clears throat> the uh, one of uh, my constituents in my district came to me and said that and i'm going to bring it up i was going to bring it up next week but i'll bring it up now since um city staff is here uh, they would like to see a roundabout or a uh, light put in at the corner of crawford and okanagan because the traffic is really bad there at peak traffic in the mornings i don't know what you have to do i'm sure there has to be a study or something but they said sometimes they wait trying to get across crawford 20 minutes or more before they can get through so Food for thought. I'll it's throw it out there. It's in the plan. It is. It is in the plan. It is in the transportation I wondered if it was. Thank you. Do you know when you're going to do it? It's titled uh, intersection intersection control. <laughs> we were avoiding the term roundabout there for a few years. <laughs> it's actually been in there for a few years already. So okay. we're going after funding as we speak with grants and stuff to try to get that money. Okay, that's good news. I'll we let have them a know. preliminary engineering estimate for that. We are we submitted a grant for uh, Crawford and Met House. Okay. Um, I want to say it was. I want to say four hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Out, so, but, okay. Uh, 
But yeah, we'll, we're, like, we're but you say Crawford and Okanagan is in there. <clears throat> okay, good. I appreciate that. It's fun how you someone from your district came and said, "Hey, I want you to look at well, my issue." Yeah, I have a. I work with him. Okay. <laughs> and I said, I guess I'm your representative now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm so glad you said that, Linda. Yeah, here. Yeah. Here. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I've got a couple of things. Uh, Kenny Strugin will be taking over at the museum on the November 19th. She will be in town uh, before that, and I plan to bring her around and introduce her to the city, okay. uh, city Hall. Uh, I also got a call from a gal named Hobie. And her concern was about the uh, tents under the Stellar uh, Bridge. <clears throat> so I don't know if we've, has uh, uh, Captain Reinfeld done anything with that, come back with anything on that, Allison? I think Edgar was determining that it was on state right of way. And so uh, Tammy was, uh, we also reported it to the Department of Health. And I know our public works crews have been down there a number of times to try to work with it. And Captain West was going to do some patrols, extra patrols in that area, try to encourage him to move along. Yeah, and so again, that's on state right away, and yeah. so I, we'll do the best we can. I, <clears throat> I'm not sure that we have the legal authority to walk in and grab their tents and right. make them move, right. but we can certainly make it uncomfortable for them a little bit. Right. Yeah. I'll give her a call and let her know what's happening. Yep. Okay. Anything else for the good of the order? Um, update on the recycling issue where the uh, waste management is asking for some money. I did hear uh, from Brenda just today, uh, several counties and cities reporting the same thing that waste management is coming to them. Uh, the one she heard from recently was Spokane, and they are going with the surcharge route. They're going to, some areas are going to go as high as a $2 a month surcharge. Most of them are a dollar per month surcharge, but they are keeping it as a surcharge rather than a rate increase. Okay. All right. Thank you, Keith. Anything else for the good of the order? If not, we're adjourned. <laughs>